Um, Kiera emerged from the house and flagged down a car. Um, the people who stopped knew her and they were surprised to see her. And uh, she asked them to drive her to the hospital. Kiera felt no resistance from the host. Uh, so when she saw Harry, there was no scream of the banshee, only concern for the baby. Harry's jaw dropped at the sight of his wife, Delana, out of the house. How is she? She's fine, Delana. They're running some tests on her. Oh, how is he? She's fine, Delana. Uh, they're running some tests on him. Delana, we're taking her home. Delana said, we're taking her home. And the nurses, you know, uh, said, no. Um, there was a big fuss. But the head doctor, James, was an old suitor of uh, Delana's. And he ordered the baby sent home with them. Uh, and there was some form formalities, some paperwork, and uh, um, but he took care of things, and that was the end of it. Uh, after shedding her skin, Kiera would never return to an old life. She would leave it behind, locks everything, but uh, this time she had a reason to revisit her old life. So as an unthreatening and undistinguishable old person, she talked her way into her old college room and left with two boxes of Susan Chow's stuff. They named the child Uyanta, and he grew up to be a, into a fine young man who was curious about his parents. So Kilora contacted James Kabanga uh, O'Brien and arranged for him to meet his son. My what? So that day came and uh, she took a lantern to meet her father, to, to meet his father. She brought the manuscript that they had written together back in the old days and several other items from the boxes she had from that life um, as Susan Chow. And uh, she told him that Susan Chow had told her the, you know, all these stories before, uh, before she left your son with us years ago. She left, um, oh, wait a minute, let me, she left this manuscript and told us about the day you had shared and the bottle of wine in your room and about how you called her your muse. Then James sent Uyenta to the concierge desk to retrieve a package for him. When he returned empty-handed, his father hugged him, uh, Yenta had no idea what conversation James had had with his mother, but, uh, I mean, with his, with his adopted mother, with his, you know, um, they talked about meeting again, but something in James' voice led Kiera to believe that meeting would never happen. So then, uh, Uyenta and Kiera visited Susan's parents. But they had both passed on, but uh, Uyenta discovered he had an aunt who had raised Uyenta's half-sister, Margaret, um, who Susan had had as a teenage mum after Susan's parents had, had passed. Um, Banshee roughly translates to a soul in pain. Uh, the, 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 that, that's the impression you get from you hearing that scream is that there is a soul out there in pain uh, and in Ireland they believe that the banshee the banshees go into the cemeteries and steal the human form of the newly dead then they return to us changed not in appearance but otherworldly we scream and recoil at the sight of our loved ones return to us and then they disappear into the night, never to be seen again. Um, but that scream, that scream is a scream that can never be forgotten. And that tell, that's their tell, that, that connects them in their scream, that otherworldly scream um, that we, the people of the peatlands, know so well out here in the foggy bogs of Ireland. It has been our curse for many generations, the scream 
of the Banshee. That there is no mistaking it is certain. In its natural form, our yellow sun is deadly to the Banshee. Even the reflection of its rays by the moon brings it great discomfort and pain. So it enters the cemetery and finds a newly dug grave and claws its way in until it is able to open the class gasket of the grave, revealing the body of Susan Chow and feasts. The Banshee in its natural form entered the casket, and several hours later, Kioro now taking the form of Susan Chow, emerges from the grave. She walks over to where she had her old skin, and next to it was a bag containing her things. She was safe for as long as the body lasted. If the body accepts the host, that might be decades, but if there is resistance, and it could be as little as a few months, the greater the resistance, the shorter the time. That is why Kiera allows the host... Oops! Uh, whoops, oh, I'm a teasy tempt again. Uh, oh, oh, okay, that's it. Um, in its natural form, our yellow sun, okay, okay, revealing the body of Susan, yep. Now, having taken the form of Susan Chow, emerged from the grave. She walked over to where she was in, in a bag containing her things. She was safe for as long as her body lasted. If the body accepts the host, that might be decades, but... Okay, uh, the great... Uh, allows the host to see the... Lo oh, that is why Kiera allows the host to see the loved ones. And uh, the loved ones are the newly departed to see uh, the new... To see uh, the newly departed return one, one, one final time. That experience seems to dissipate resistance within the host. Uh, so Kiera does everything she can to extend her time with each host, until that time when, having burned through another body, she has to repeat the process. Um, as has been her life for centuries. As she has dedicated herself to the pursuit of knowledge and to helping guide man towards the stars, Sentient beings capable of returning her one day to her home in the stars. She used her ship as a fortress of solitude and as her lab to find her way home. Kiera comes from a planet that eliminated aging. We age until we choose to undergo a process, an acceptance that stops our bodies from aging any further. <laughs> 